microphone is on. <clears throat> We've had communion every Ash Wednesday since I've been here. <laughs> We've done communion every Ash Wednesday that I've been here. Okay. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Yeah. I just always remember no communion. <laughs> You're Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to God's house today as we celebrate Ash Wednesday, a time of reflection uh, and a time of penance. Um, for our service today, first for those watching online, my daughter is at uh, school, and so I don't have the ability to change the camera view, so you're just going to have to put up with the camera being where it is. For everybody here, uh, our service, um, we don't sing throughout all of Lent, if, you, if you've remembered over the last five years, no opening hymns so that we can come in and reflect on what the Lenten season is and why, why uh, it's important to understand our own sinfulness as we approach our Lord's cross. Um, and then today, uh, to kick off Lent, we always start with what's known as praying the litany. So in, in the place of the, um, uh, the opening hymn, we will have the litany this morning, and that is in your bulletins. Um, and so that's, that is where we will begin. You may be, remain seated for that, but once again, this is, a, if, if you remember, the litany is a responsive prayer that kind of goes back and forth, and there's a, a kind of a rhythm and a cadence to this prayer, and it's a beautiful prayer, but it's also a reflective prayer that help us to go into the Lenten season uh, properly. So we pray. O Lord, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world, God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, in the day of judgment, we poor sinners implore you to prosper the teaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. to draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to have mercy on us all, to turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and graciously to hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, O Christ, O Lord, O Christ, O Lord. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they should turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up 
for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will do the imposition of ashes, just kind of like how we do communion. If you would like ashes placed on your forehead, please come up uh, and I will do so. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Our service continues with the divine service setting three on page 184 in our hymnals. I invite you to rise if you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We pause for reflection on God's word and for self-examination. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you, of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our intro, it is found in our bulletins. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take me not my soul to your 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We continue with the salutation and collect of the day on page 189. The Lord be with you. We pray together the prayer of the day is found in our bulletins. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. may be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading for Ash Wednesday is from Joel chapter 2. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and He relents over disaster. Who knows whether He will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind Him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a reproach among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. We read responsively our gradual is found in our bulletins. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Our epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapters 5 and 6. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listened to you, And in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. By great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments. 
riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came, baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and bore witness that this is the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our hymn of the day for today is hymn 607, From Depths of Woe I Cry to Thee, hymn 607. Strict demand, 
and live alone by mercy. Therefore my hope is in the Lord, and not in mine own merit. It rests upon his faithful word, for them of contrite spirit, that he is merciful and just. This is my comfort and my trust, his help I wait with patience. And though it tarry through the night Until the morning waken My heart shall never doubt his might Nor count itself forsaken Oh, Israel, trust in God your Lord, born of the Spirit and the Word. Now wait for his appearing. Though great are sins, yet greater still, is God's abundant favor. His hand of mercy never will abandon us nor waver. Our shepherd good and true is he, who will at last his Israel free from all their sin and sorrow? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Tattoo parlors need a sign over their entrance that says, Think before you ink. And this analogy will become clear why I'm talking about tattoos on Ash Wednesday shortly. Just bear with me for a moment. There should also be playing background music that says, Do you really want to carry your girlfriend's name on your shoulder for the rest of your life? In America, tattoo removal has become big business. More and more tattoo-bearing people experience what psychologists actually call tattoo regret syndrome. According to a 2018 Harris Poll survey, a number of Americans with tattoos and those considering removal of those tattoos is on the rise. But removal is not cheap. To remove a single tattoo can take up to 12 sessions spaced out over two years, and each one of those sessions can cost $100 to $400. Imagine, though, friends, if our regrets in life showed up as tattoos. How marked would we be on the outside? What picture would we see in the mirror? The face of someone we hurt? The money that we've wasted? All of the couldas and shouldas that we have in life? I could have been a better dad. I should have paid closer attention. I could have been a better student. If we dig around the basement of our lives, what do we find? So often wasted years, obsessive greed, destructive diversions, anger, arrogance, selfishness. What can we do with all of the unwanted marks? Well, we can certainly be defensive. It's kind of human nature to defend our mistakes, right? When we're defensive, we don't admit anything. We tell no one. We keep that skeleton safely locked up in the closet. We seek innocence, not forgiveness. When we're defensive, we reduce life to one goal. 
simply to hide the secret. We don't address it, we don't admit it, and whatever we do, we never ever confess it. When we see the marks of regret, another option is to be defeated. When we're defeated, we feel as though we don't make mistakes, that we are a mistake. We don't foul up things every now and again. We are, in fact, a foul up. We beat ourselves up repeatedly with blame and shame. We take the role of judge, jury, and of the accusing attorney. And we render the guilty. Guilty forever. Defensive people hide marks. Defeated people replay those marks over and over again. But is there a better way? You bet there is. We can be delivered from all of our ugly marks, and it won't cost you $100 to $400 a session for each one of them. As we begin Lent this Ash Wednesday, we begin a series of sermons called Witness to Christ. And the first person that helps us follow Christ to the cross in the Gospel of John is John, not John the Gospel writer but John the Baptist. What does John the Baptist say when we're defensive about sin or defeated by sin? He says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When it comes to all of our ugly marks of sin, we can be delivered. Behold. Behold literally means see. The verb is also translated as look, gaze, stare, take note. Behold means in Scripture, this is the whole point to what I'm saying. John the Baptist says it again in 1 verse 36. Behold. So in both of these verses, verse 1 verse 29 and in 136, he says, behold the Lamb of God. This isn't an ordinary Lamb. This is the Passover Lamb of God. John uses the word Passover 11 times in his Gospel. The entirety of John's Gospel is structured to help us behold, to see, to gaze, to take note of Christ, the Passover Lamb. In the Old Testament in Exodus 12, it says that the Passover Lamb is a male lamb, perfect spotless and without defect. Exodus 12.7 says that the Israelites are to place the Passover lamb's blood on the sides and tops of their door frames. And this blood would set the Israelites free. Free from bricks, free from whips, free from Pharaoh's countless perversions. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away The verb takes away is in the present tense. That means that Christ still takes away. Today, He takes away. Tomorrow, He takes away. Next week, He takes away. And what is it that He takes away? The sin of the world. And that includes your sin. Your ugly sin. Your shameful sin. The sin that haunts you. Every single one of your sins. He takes all of it away. Christ not only removes your guilt, but He takes away your shame. Guilt is sin done by us. Shame is usually done to us. Guilt is what we feel when we've done wrong. Shame is usually what we feel when someone has wronged us. We all know what public shame feels like. Maybe you've been branded by a divorce, marked by some sort of handicap, saddled with alcoholic parents growing up, crushed because a child's arrest, stigmatized because you've lost your job, your spouse, your house, or even your life savings, and everyone knows. But other than public shame, there's also private shame. And we've all felt that too. Maybe you've been pushed to the edge Molested by a parent, seduced by a sneaky superior, teased without mercy, and no one else knows. But we know. That's enough to bury us in that shame. 
We put our hands over our ears. We splash water on our faces. We go on a long drive. And yet nothing takes away our shame. Nothing takes away our guilt. Sin has marked us and that's that. Or is it? Well, no, it's not. We don't have to drink to take away our sins, to work to take away our sins. We don't have to explain our sin away, eat our sin away, cry our sin away, or try to bury it way down deep. We're Christians. We behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I know this is often hard to believe. Many of us have carried those ugly marks for so long that we can't even imagine life without them. Maybe we can't imagine it, but God can, and He does. And God does more than just imagine it. He sends John the Baptist to you and tells you, Behold, look, see, here's the whole point of what I'm saying. The Lamb of God takes away all of the sin of the world. Our Passover lamb does it all for the whole world. And the Passover lamb of God does it all for you. And so we pray, Jesus, please take all of it away. We can tell Jesus what we have done. We can tell Jesus what we have said, what we have seen, what we took. We can tell Him how we feel. We can tell Jesus the things that we have thought And we can pray this prayer as often as needed, all day, every day. One time, two times, ten times a day, we can pray it withholding nothing back. No guilt is too ancient or too recent. No shame is too evil or too insignificant. No marks are so malicious that they can't be completely removed. Jesus, take it all away. We're always tempted, tempted to put a qualifier, right? Take it away, Jesus. I'm such a louse. It doesn't work, though. Because in God's eyes, you're not. When God looks at you, He doesn't see that troubled sinner. He sees His baptized child. And He loves you. For another, marks are only removed when they're exposed to grace. And what do we need grace for? For being a bad person? Yeah, but that's pretty general. For losing our patience at meetings? Calling our co-workers names? Those are tangible things we can confess. Confession isn't a punishment for sin. Confession names sin so that God's grace can destroy it. Be firm in this prayer, my friends. Satan likes to traffic in guilt and shame. And he never gives up without a fight. When he comes knocking, when he comes stirring up all that guilt and shame for you, you tell him that you left your sin with the Passover lamb of God, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. The beginning of this Lent, as we spend a season reflecting on our sinfulness, we have time for a fresh start, a new slate and a new beginning. That is what Lent is all about. We don't need to be defeated or defensive. Today we can simply be delivered. And we do that not by looking at all of our black marks, but looking at God's. Looking at the marks on His hands and His feet. Behold, look, see. I have engraved you on the palm of my hands, the prophet Isaiah writes. Jesus has your name written where He can see it. Your name is on His blood-stained hands. Yes, He loves you that much. If you've ever wondered how God reacts when guilt and shame have you cornered and are ready to swallow you whole, if you ever have wondered how God feels when you are lost, abandoned, and helpless, if you've ever wondered what God would do if He ever found out about all of those deepest, darkest secrets, then write this down and hang it on your wall. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Trust in those words. Believe in those words. Stand below those words and trust that Jesus will take it all away. Because He took the nails. He took the cross. 
And on that God-forsaken cross, taking all of the nails, He also took away your sin, your guilt, and your shame. He hung there for you. And He still says, I have engraved you on the palm of my hands. In the end, these are the only marks that matter. And the marks on Christ's hands can never be erased. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We sing together our offertory found on page 192. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God and for all people according to their needs, we pray. Holy God, Almighty Lord, we, your unworthy people, come to you this day acknowledging the great debt we owe for your merciful kindness in giving to us, your own Son, to be our Savior and Redeemer. In love he suffered for our sins and died the death that was ours to die so that he might forgive us of our sins and raise us from death to everlasting life. Receive our thanks and praise for his one all-sufficient sacrifice upon the cross and keep us in this faith and fear all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, preserve your word, O Lord, against error and preserve among us the teaching of your word that we may be nurtured in faith, discern truth from falsehood, and remain steadfast in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Open our hearts to the preaching of your word, that through daily repentance we be kept in the promise of our baptism and in the new life born of water and the Spirit. Give to your church pastors who will serve us faithfully in your name with the means of grace. Raise up many church workers to fulfill the various callings and offices your church has appointed. Bless those preparing for baptism and the catechumens being instructed in your word. Help us to shine with the brightness of Christ's light before the world and be ever ready to give answer to the hope that is within us. Lord, in your mercy, bestow upon all the nations of the world the blessing of peace and the threat of terrorism and quiet the hearts of those who foster hate and violence. Give to us and faithful leaders Give to us good and faithful leaders, especially do we pray for our president, our governor, the Congress of these United States, our state legislature, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Lend us your aid to the cause of life and its protection from conception until its natural end. Bless the servicemen and women who defend us at home and abroad. Give us the will and desire to be good and faithful citizens and to daily pray for those in authority over us. Lord, in your mercy, provide for those who suffer man-made or natural disasters and bless relief workers who come to their aid. Bless the fruits of the earth and our stewardship of all of its resources for the good and benefit of all people. Bless all honest labor and industry, the arts and music, and all good works for your glory. Be with the sick and those who suffer trouble, want, anguish, peril, or death. Give them courage under trial, patience to endure their afflictions without losing heart, and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, grant to us your Holy Spirit that we who come to our Lord's table today may receive the body and blood of Christ in sincere repentance and with confident faith. 
recognizing Christ's presence in this sacrament and rejoicing in the forgiveness of our sins and the nourishment of our faith. Help us so that we may have received upon our lips, we may keep in holy lives and live under Christ in his kingdom until we live in his presence in everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our bodies and souls and all our talents and skills. With tithes and offerings we bring, in thanksgiving for all your benefits in Christ. These and all things good and beneficial, we ask you to grant us in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament on page 194. I invite you please to rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in, in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins, do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thou Lamb of God, 
that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Ah, 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 Amen. May be seated. Charles, take and eat to the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Jerry, take and eat to the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Kathy, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Sally, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. John, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Karen, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Angie, take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. The true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you.
we rise for the post-communion blessing. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you all in body and soul into life everlasting. Depart in his peace, knowing that your sins are forgiven. Amen. We sing together the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to light and the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. You may be seated. Our closing hymn today is hymn 609, Jesus Sinners Doth Receive, hymn 609. sinners doth receive oh may all this saying ponder who in sin's delusions live and from God and heaven wander here is hope for all who Jesus sinners doth receive. We deserve but grief and shame, yet his words rich grace revealing. Pardon, peace, and life proclaim. Here our ills have perfect healing. Firmly in these words believe, Jesus sinners doth receive. 
Sheep that from the fold did stray, no true shepherd ever forsaketh. Weary souls that lost their way, Christ the shepherd gently taketh. In his arms that they may live, Jesus sinners doth receive. Are ye sinner come to thee with a penitent confession? Savior, mercy show to me. Grant for all my sins remission. Let these words my soul relieve. Jesus, sinners, doth receive. Oh, how blessed it is to know were as scarlet my transgression, it shall be as white as snow by thy blood and bitter passion. For these words I now believe, Jesus, sinners, doth receive. Now my conscience is at peace. From the law I stand acquitted. Christ hath purchased my release and my every sin remitted. Not remains my soul to grieve, Jesus sinners doth receive. Jesus sinners doth receive. Also I have been forgiven, and when I this earth must leave, I shall find an open heaven. Turning still to him I cleave, Jesus, sinners, doth receive. That's a great hymn, especially that last verse. If you're looking for a hymn for your funeral, that's a good one to pick. All right. Happy Wash Wednesday, everyone. Uh, just a, a couple quick announcements. One, we do have a meal and service again tonight uh, at Oklahoma Avenue. Meals at 5.30, service at 7 p.m. I know most of you have received the devotionals that we had that go with our sermon series this, this uh, Lenten season. I've given all of those out that we have. There might be some over at Oklahoma Avenue. But I also have one that all of the pastors for the churches in the city of Milwaukee have created to, um, to use these 40 days of, of repentance to pray for the violence that's happening in our city. If you pay attention to the news, you know that we are plugging along at about a homicide a day in the city of Milwaukee. There are some very good devotionals. I urge you to use both of these. Use one for an evening when you, when you wake up in the morning and one, for the, the, or, and the one in the morning when you wake up and one in the evening before you go to bed. I've got those on the way out. Uh, I'll hand those out to, to anybody that would like them. Um, uh, I don't think there's any other announcements. Please sign in on the pew pads on the inside. Note that Trish has not input um, the attendance from this weekend. So if you could quick date and then sign, I would appreciate that. Um, we've had a lot of extra work with getting ready for not only Ash Wednesday services, but for Jean's funeral tomorrow. Uh, and she hasn't had time to get the, the service or the uh, attendance input. So just please date when you sign in. We go in peace and we serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.